Welcome to online worship at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Van Wert, Ohio. We are excited that you're joining us today on this weekend of Memorial Day. Veterans, active personnel, thank you for your service. We love you, we appreciate all that you do for your country and for our families. We are beginning a new sermon series which is entitled Canoeing the Mountains. It involves Lewis and Clark and the Corps Discovery and their mission from 1804 to 1806. Almost all of them were military veterans and it was the expedition of a lifetime. But they came to a point in realizing the world in front of them is far different than the world behind them. So what does that mean for us today as we deal with the coronavirus and the world that we are currently experiencing and the one that is ahead of us? Because it is quite different from the one behind us. So we're going to spend some time discovering that, discussing that, exploring that, and what it looks like for us to be the core discovery in the 21st century in Van Wert County. We worship as the people of God on this Memorial Day weekend in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, St. Mark's, from our house to yours. On this weekend Memorial Day, let us begin our time of worship with a moment of remembrance and thanksgiving. For the family members who have made great sacrifices in order to make it possible for their service members to be on watch at home or around the world or to go into harm's way. Lord God, we ask your blessing. For the families who grieve the death of a member who went into harm's way never to return. Lord God, we ask your blessing. Jesus tells us that no one has greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend for all those veterans who have been willing to lay down their lives for us. Lord God, we ask your blessing. For the veterans of past wars who bear scars in their bodies and spirits. Lord God, we ask your blessing. For veterans 
who came home but couldn't fit in with their families or communities anymore. Lord God, we ask your blessing. Keep all our veterans in your care today, Lord God. Grant them the peace they sought to preserve for others. As we honor our veterans, we also pray for peace. Teach all your people the ways of peace and justice that those who have sacrificed so much for peace and freedom will not have done so in vain. Empower us to love our neighbors and our enemies, to work for your kingdom in this world, and welcome us by your grace into your kingdom in the next. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose death and resurrection opens the pathway to freedom from sin and death unto eternal life. Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ in each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, the reading today is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised. Beloved, do not be surprised. At the fiery ordeal. At the fiery ordeal. That is taking place among you. What's taking place? That is that, taking place among you. That is taking place among you. To test you. To test you. As though something strange. As though there's something strange. Were happening to you. Were happening to you. But rejoice. But rejoice. Insofar as. Insofar as. You are sharing Christ's sufferings. You're sharing Christ's sufferings. So that you may also be glad. You may also be glad. And shout for joy. And shout for joy. 
when his glory is revealed. When his glory is revealed. If you are reviled. If you are reviled. For the name of Christ. For the name of Christ. You are blessed. You are blessed. Because the spirit of glory. Where are, which mine are Because the spirit of glory. glory. Which is the spirit of God. God. Is resting on you. Is resting on you. It's your part. It's my mom's part now. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all of your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The good news of the Holy Gospel for you, God's people, is written in the Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have been given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. Grace be on you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. On this weekend of Memorial Day, we are beginning a new sermon series entitled, Canoeing the Mountains. Now that may sound like a peculiar title, but there's a lot of power and meaning in this. Because how do you canoe through mountains? This series is based on the book of the same title by Todd Bolsinger. We're going to glean some lessons that we can learn from it, and how that applies to our lives today of an expedition that took place over 200 years ago. See, it was in 1803 in which President Thomas Jefferson coordinated the purchase of the Louisiana Territory. It's known as the Louisiana Purchase. And the third president of the United States received a lot of criticism for this. Why are we buying land that we don't need with money that we don't have. Jefferson knew in order to prove his critics wrong and to ensure people that it was the wise thing to do, knew that they had to discover the water route, a tra commerce of trading and waterways in which this portion would be able to cover from coast then to coast. It was an economic engine for this fledgling nation. 
And so what Jefferson did, two men, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. And we start this sermon series on Memorial Weekend because Lewis and Clark were military veterans. And most of the core of discovery were military veterans as well. So they were charted, charged, excuse me, with this very important job and responsibility to find the waterway that would go to the Pacific Ocean. Because the idea was you would go from the Gulf of Mexico up the Mississippi River, across the Missouri River, and somewhere, someplace, it would connect to the Columbia River, or at least would be very close to connecting the Columbia River. Whoever would discover that would have influence from east to west from Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. Now, on this journey of Lewis and Clark and the Corps of Discovery, they spent a number of months with the Mandan tribe. And during this time, they asked the Mandans, is there a river on the other side? And they said, yes, but you're going to have to go across mountains to find it. Well, these men were from Virginia. They knew the Shenandoah Mountains. They thought, What's the big deal with that? You can portage canoes around those kind of mountains. Easy, schmeasy, parcheesy. Well, they didn't realize exactly what was ahead of them. Because then on August 12, 1805, it was Meriwether Lewis who looked above the rise at the Lemhi Pass, which is near modern-day border between Montana and Idaho. And as he looked above it, he didn't see nice level flat plains that would eventually lead down to the Pacific Ocean from the Columbia River. Instead, he saw this. Mountains. Lots of mountains. Mountains that were very different from the Shenandoah Mountains back east in Virginia. This was 300 miles wide of mountains of rocky mountains. They have never seen mountains like this before. So tall, steep, peaks, snow-covered like that. Nothing that the eyes had seen. For 300 years, European map makers had laid out the terrain of North America. That was a, it was a gradual, gradual slope up, and then it would be a gradual slope down into the Pacific. And boy, were they wrong. It was not a gradual slope up and a gradual slope down. Rather, what Meriwether Lewis and the Corps of Discovery saw was no gradual slope at all, but a mountain range. How were they going to canoe through that? That was the challenge. The world in front of them was very different from the world behind them. These were water people. They were river people. They had canoed their way to this point at the Lemhi Pass or close to that. Now, what are they going to do? Because canoes are not going to work in mountains. Or to put it another way, paddling harder in a canoe but without water isn't going to work. So they had to adapt and they had to improvise. Military veterans, this is your bread and butter. I'm speaking your language here. How is it that you were trained in the military service, in your boot camp, all those experiences? In order to survive and to succeed, you have to adapt. You have to improvise. Adapt or die. It is a key to success in the changing conditions that you can experience in the field. And this is exactly what these military men, Lewis and Clark and the Corps of Discovery, realized what they had to do. Because now they were living in a very different world from what they knew and from what they had been brought up to believe. What does that have to do with us about to adapt, to improvise? 
With the core discovery, they understood that is exactly what they had to be, to have a spirit of adventure, to be a core of discovery. Because only by doing that, they realized they would be able to progress forward. This core discovery relied on each other. This core discovery understood that's exactly what they were to be doing, to discover. We live in a much different world now. The world behind us, pre-COVID-19 world, and what we have experienced all these years that we have lived in, and then what is facing us, which is a COVID and post-COVID-19 world, that is very different. Two very different worlds. The, folks, the world ahead of us is very different from the world behind us. The terrain has changed. People of St. Mark's, this is my invitation to you. This is also my challenge to you. And that is where we are now and where we need to move forward. Paddling harder in the canoe but without water is not going to work. As disciples of Jesus have learned and have known for 2,000 years, with changing conditions and changing terrain, and the world in front of us different from the world behind us, in order for us to be faithful to our God and to continue to do effective and creative ministry, in reaching people for Jesus, and helping those who are in need. We will need to adapt, and we will need to improvise. My invitation to you is that we, as the congregation of St. Mark's, become a core of discovery. And we might as well have some fun with this in a very difficult and challenging situation. To be creative as we adapt and as we improvise. To use our imagination and creativity as a way in which we are able to continue the mission of Jesus. We marry the mission, but we date the methods. The mission of Jesus, of making disciples of Christ, is always the same. How we go about doing that, that we can adapt and improvise. Because it is quite a different world in front of us as the core of discovery discovered. So in our reading from 1 Peter, as this is our initial installment of our sermon series, Canoeing the Mountains, Peter, the disciple Peter, Jesus' right-hand man, I think, gives us some excellent, excellent insight. And the time of today is what he dealt with two millennium ago. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, a long time ago, were going through very difficult times as well, to the point where they were being martyred for the faith. They were going through ordeals back then. We go through our own ordeals of today. And I'll be the first one to admit, when it comes to the coronavirus and everything that is going on, yeah, I'm tired of it. I would love for us to be worshiping in person. And I totally get it that there are polarized understandings of what is taking place and everything in between. The government has our best interests in mind. No, the government is only interested in power and control. We have conflicting reports about the seriousness of this illness. It's nothing to worry about. It is very deadly. With all these differences of opinions in the politicizing of this issue, we need to maintain unity in the bond of peace while at the same time moving forward in an incremental way. And I totally understand no one is going to be happy with the decisions that are made, federal, state, local, 
by our bishop, by our church council, and myself, and the committees of this church. But it is a time for us to be the core of discovery, to take on a spirit of adventure, to break loose from imaginative gridlock, and to seek ways in which, in the midst of our humility and sacrifice, that we can honor God and glorify our Lord and still do the ministry of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. What are some of the things that Peter says we can do as we are going through an ordeal? Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, practicing humility before our Creator and our Savior and our Sanctifier. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that He may exalt you in due time. In God's timing. As we humble ourselves before the Lord, in due time the Lord will exalt us. In other words, what goes down, God will determine, comes up. Cast all your anxiety on our Lord, because He cares for you. This is an anxious time. A time of being reactive, a time of being short-tempered, a time of just being fed up with what is taking place in our country and with the coronavirus. We're even beginning to wonder, is this going to be a year without a summer? Cast all your anxiety, your stress, your worries, your pressures on our God because He cares for you. This is a very hard time. There are people who are under financial duress and stress. There are folks who have lost their jobs. There are people who their emotional health is at risk. We live in a pandemic and an unprecedented time. And it's taking its toll. Cast your anxiety on Him because our God cares for you. How do we know this? Look to Jesus. Look at how Jesus interacted with people. Look at what Jesus gave up for you. His very own life on the cross on Good Friday. But the story doesn't end there because Easter Sunday, Jesus is risen from the dead. And that is the core proclamation of the church. That neither Satan nor sin nor death can overcome our God and separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And as we continue our journey through life and with our God as a core discovery, these are some of the things that we indeed discover. Peter continues, So discipline yourselves. The sermons that we have had, the times that we have been together online, our messages have always said, here are some things that you can do in the midst of the quarantine, in the midst of the lockdown, to keep you going, to go deeper with our God, to have a better understanding of who and whose you are. Discipline yourselves. Do not waste this time. Make the most of it. Because who knows, church, as we read in the book of Esther, for such a time as this, Perhaps this is some of our best time to be a witness on behalf of our Lord Jesus Christ. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert like a roaring lion. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. We can be consumed with anger. We can be consumed with division. We can be consumed with my way or the highway. These are dangerous things. Oh, how Satan would just love to see so many churches around the world implode because of disagreements. We can have differences of opinion and still love and like each other and work towards the common goal of the mission of our Lord. And quite honestly, in the midst of this hard work, they can be fun, too, if we use our imagination and creativity. 
and allow God to breathe through us in His Holy Spirit. I am not diminishing the fact, folks. The world in front of us, as with Lewis and Clark in the core discovery, the Lemhi Pass in 1804, as they saw the world in front of them very different from the world behind them. So too with us. The world ahead of us quite different from the world behind us. Peter continues, so resist him, resist the devil. Arm's length, resist. And be steadfast in your faith. The reason we discipline ourselves, the reason reason we practice spiritual habits is so that we have fitness in our faith to be steadfast as God loves us we can go deeper in our relationship with Him. And as we go deeper in our relationship with Him, we become more genuine and more authentic and life-giving in our relationships with others. And we discover that within our own lives as well. But it's, hey, it's your choice. You can either make the most of this time or not. I can't tell you what to do. But I know what I hope you will do. Because doing this, as Peter is describing for us, gives God the glory. For your brothers and sisters in all the world, it's not just here in Van Wert, it's not just Van Wert County, it's not just the state of Ohio, it's not just in the United States of America, it's not just in North America, it's not just in the Western Hemisphere. COVID-19, this pandemic, is global. In all the world, your brothers and sisters are undergoing the same kinds of sufferings, of frustrations, of exasperation, of exhaustion, of tired of experiencing cabin fever but with no snow. Yeah. We're not alone in this by any means. And Peter, as he wraps it up, And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, God of grace and God of glory, this God of justice and of judgment is also a God of mercy and of unconditional love, grace. And that we see ultimately in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself. Here is the promise. This God, who we worship online, someday in person, this God will restore you, will support you, will strengthen you, and will establish you. This is the promise, people of God, that is given to you. We are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, and devoted followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. We as disciples have this Easter hope of the promise, not just after we die, but in this lifetime as well. It is a different world that is ahead of us. Church, we have a choice. We can either succumb or we can overcome. Church, we have a choice because the world in front of us being so different from the world behind us, we can use this as an incredible opportunity and we're all ready and we have been seeing this happen. So many people have stepped up to the plate and have made a difference, and have used their imagination, and have used their creativity, and are being an incredible witness to the ministry and mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're one who has not done that, I invite you to do so, and I challenge you to do so, because for such a time as this, we as the people of St. Mark's are ready, have been, and will do great work in the name of our Lord. We are 
the core of discovery of today in this community. And we have the invitation and opportunity to be leaders in what the opportunities are set before us, to see and seize the opportunities in a way that is also protecting our people, meaning not putting them at unnecessary risk. So don't waste this crisis. Don't waste this opportunity. Don't waste this moment in time. But we make the most of it to the disciplines that Peter has revealed to us. Grieve your loss. It stinks. I'm the first one to admit, I'll be glad when this stuff is all done. So grieve your loss. Maybe you're in denial at this point, or maybe it's the stage of anger. We're blaming, woulda, shoulda, coulda. We're depression. Or maybe you have reached that final frontier of acceptance and have come to terms with it. We can all deal with our losses in our very own personal way. Do it in a healthy way. Face it. Embrace it. Work through it. With people who care for you and obviously with our God that cares for you. Learn from this experience. Let's not waste this time. What are the lessons that we as a church are learning during this corona time in ways that we are able to testify to God's glory and power and strength and beauty and might and to have that spirit of adventure. This is a great, great time to have a spirit of adventure see and seize the opportunities of what you and I and collectively together, us as a congregation, can do as the people of God, as a witness for God, and for the benefit of our community and our people. Folks, let's go canoeing the mountains. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us proclaim our resurrection faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Spirit of God, descend upon our hearts, we pray. On this weekend of Memorial Day, we lift up to you and remember those who are in the military of active duty and our veterans. We realize that all gave some. Lord, some gave all. We pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones in wartime and in peacetime. We pray, Lord, for all who serve and have served in serving this country. Lord, you are an unknown God, yet made known to us in the birth and life and death and resurrection of Jesus. Through your Holy Spirit, we are called to seek God, seek good, and live. And as the disciple Peter shared with us in his letter this morning, of all in which we can practice to bring you glory, Lord, especially for such a time as this. We intercede and pray on behalf of Paul Arthur and Alicia Hickerson, Sandy Gordon, for Connie Unkefer, Bill Lufkin, Marlene Friend, for Jill, Carolyn Nyheiser, Michelle Foss, Vicki Foss, Nancy Gardner, and for the family and friends of Ahmad Arbery. We pray, Lord, for those suffering the effects of the coronavirus. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession. Holy Spirit, lead us to love God, add value to people, and to make disciple makers. And so we pray for all your congregations of Christ followers throughout the world, for your guidance and wisdom for the leaders of our country and those of other nations, for our Bishop Daniel Bowden and family, and for presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusted in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. This is an opportunity to share the peace of our God. It is something that has been practiced throughout the, earth, the years, beginnings of the early church. So it's a 2,000-year tradition that we have and celebrate in our congregation, as all Christians do throughout the world. Now, mind you, in the beginnings, it was known as the kiss of peace. And then they changed that to, I think, hugs and handshakes. Perhaps some of our early sisters and brothers in Christ were getting a little carried away with that kiss of peace deal. So if you want to practice the kiss of peace with uh, that special someone who might be next to you, if it's okay with them, give them a smooch and say, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And they can respond and also with you. And if not to that degree, just say peace of God with them. Or a hug, or a handshake, or just a hand wave. Marilyn, the peace of the Lord be with you. D, God's peace be with you. And with you, Pastor. The ministry of your church is still functioning. The doors, which will be opening soon in this building, are for now closed. But yet the work of Christ has continued and will continue. We have a 156-year history in this community and county, and in this country and throughout the world. 
your financial offerings, we want to thank you for your generosity and for the continuation of the support that Christ's work can continue through St. Mark's. We can do so by going to the church website or to text 419-273-9947. You can mail your offerings to the church office or bring them directly during office hours Monday through Friday. Or you can save your offerings and bring them collectively when we once again worship in person here in the sanctuary. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom in the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed and beloved people of God and members of his forever family, God has shown you what is good. What does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. For the world in front of us is very different from the world behind us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.